Three Friends, one amazing series of YA novels. An insatiable thirst to relive the glory that is K.A. Applegate's literary masterpiece. This is Fathomworth's The Dork Vegeta Chronicles. Hello and welcome to the Dork Bajir Chronicles. It's a podcast where we read through the Animorph series one book at a time and talk about it every week. Today, though, we're going to be talking about the Animorphs TV series, episode 17, Not My Problem. I'm Tessa, the expert. And I'm Brayden, the, well, uh, not the host, that's for sure. That's because I'm the host, and I'm Jared. <gasps> New host! Dun, dun, dun! Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> We've replaced Mikhail now. Ma- well, yes. what had happened was in the episode, the Speaking Tree episode for book 32, uh, we ascribed some fan mail, and we're not fan mail, we ascribed some uh, reader submission incorrectly. Um, Julia gave us a great suggestion of what she would do as a starfish, and Mikhail accidentally said, Steve. Gave us that info. So, we've already discussed it with uh, the person in question, and as a result, Mikhail is no longer with us, and we also have to call him Tina. Okay, alternative take. Alternative take. Um, Mikhail made a wish that he had never started the podcast, and (laughs) he's off having his own little adventure, um, like this episode. Cool. I mean, the Mikhail definitely did do that thing. But I think what happened was he uh, was felt so ashamed. M- Mikhail Tina is what I want to call him because that sounds like a drink. I don't drink alcohol, but that sounds like it could be a thing. Um, I think you're thinking of the Mikhail Tini, the drink that I invented. Oh, yes. I think that <laughs> is what got me confused. I was there when you invented it. You uh, jerked Mikhail off into a cup and then added some vodka. A little bit of vermouth. <laughs> that's all it's in. Shake it really well with a, with an egg white, too, so it gets Ooh, all frothy, you know? Gross. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, um, let's, before we get too far off track, let's go into some. Fetamil! Ooh, yeah! Fetamil! Ooh, yeah! First piece of fan mail is from Lego Rat at Lego Rats on Twitter, who says, uh, who tags us and says, you've probably already seen this, but I'd feel negligent if I didn't bring it to your attention. And it's a video talking about how the weird Animorphs covers were made. I think, I think you showed me this and it's like stupidly easy. It's like how they did it. Technology, man. Science. They, they done did it. <laughs> and like I kind of wish that this technology was available to run on uh modern operating systems cuz I remember I remember reading an article about the artist a while ago. That was pretty cool. Yes, I remember you saying this. All right. Well, um Do you want to hit us with our second piece of fan mail? Yes. Our next piece of fan mail comes via Kieran Andrews at Kieran underscore Andrews on Twitter who led us to a Another Twitter account called Animorphs Out of Context, at No Context Morphs on Twitter, uh, showing a third um, post. I don't know how to, maybe we should have just gone with the first post. Anyway, okay, so. You're you're doing good. The prime post is from Red Scarlack, at Red Facts on Twitter, uh, showing two pictures of falcons landing on top of interestingly hatted gentlemen and the caption describes how when falconers uh need to breed falcons they wear special hats and the hats encourage the falcons to fuck them presumably through scent or some such I and think then, it's just the general shape of them is so very alluring. It looks like an unwrapped condom. Yeah. That's, this is... I... Oh, guys, I don't know where to, to go from here. Did you need to put that on your head? You want a bird to shake the top of your head? It's per- I mean, what are you going to do? You got to have your hands to get the bird off after he's finished. No, can't the, you just put it on something? <laughs> a mannequin? They don't necessarily want to fuck your head. They want to fuck the hat, right? No, no, I think what it is is that birds bond with humans. Oh, or like gosh. just animals in general bond with humans. I've definitely heard of some other kind of animal in zoos that tries to like 
mate do mate displays for the zookeepers. Maybe it's like a, a peacock or something. I'm misremembering a lot right now. Guys, I'm not comfortable with this anymore. We need to move on. Yeah, Jerry, <laughs> please uh, surrender unto us the summary. Oh, sweet lord! Before please, you do, can I tell you this. just a little bit of cool facts about it? Oh, fuck it me. is called "Not My Problem." It is episode oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. seventeen of the first season, directed by Stacy Curtis and written by George Melrod. Cool no way, people. the Rod. The Rod himself. It was released January 26, 1999. So it's been a couple of weeks so that everybody has, you know, definitely forgotten their New Year's resolutions. Um, but they're still trying to party like it's 1999. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. Yeah, I'm good. Maybe I'm not still looking party. at the, I still have that image of that sex hat in my brain. <laughs> That's not leaving. Good lord. Just look at a we, we start off, smarmy mug and forget all about it. We start off at the school and Jake seems to have his panties in a wad for no particular reason. It's tough being a kid. I Well, he finds a note on his locker. I was read I was watching a pretty low quality rip. Did we see what was actually on that piece of paper? No, it's just, I, nothing it's at just all. Weird I thought it was like maybe a failure for a test because he mentions like two seconds later that he's not doing so hot for hot for homework. But like, really, Jake's just having them simple plan feels, y'all. <laughs> I'm just a kid, and life is a fucking nightmare. It probably just like is Jake, but starting with a G, so it looks <laughs> like it spells gay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So it, Jake's got his panties on. Everybody else seems to be like in a pretty decent mood for you know teenagers who are fighting off aliens yeah. all by themselves. I mean, they for do all need Jake's soldiers. help for literally being child soldiers, giving given morphing powers by a half horse alien. And yeah, yeah. Jake goes home and he voiceovers. You know how much I love my voiceover monologues. He, it's like, things are hard, because I never know who's a controller, and then who shows up his controller brother, Tom. And the music, it's really intense. It does, it, like, this whole this scene moment. is really intense, and I don't like it at all. Because <laughs> they, they, like, Tom shows up, he's like, oh, come play some basketball with me and my two large friends here, who you didn't see when you walked in the They're door. They're just surrounding you, you know, You know, like the ones do. closing in on you. And the ones who are about an inch away from your face. Come play basketball with us, Jake. Come play basketball with us, This was the start of a gay porn. Oh, like, they were gonna slam Jake onto his knees and just force feed him dicks. Oh, no! It's not incest if you can't get pregnant, bro. (laughs) That's his brother! <laughs> Instead, Jake goes to his bedroom, avoids all of the gay sexual content, and um, just fucking pounce on the bed before a Jedi Force ghost shows up. Uh, the shittiest version of the Jedi Force ghost ever, the Elemist. Yep. Fucking at me. Yep. Bring it on. The Elemist is worse than a Jedi Force I really ghost. don't like his design at all. I put that in my notes. That I, <laughs> But we'll talk well, about that yeah, after the episode. Well, he's, the thing about it is he doesn't have a design. He looks like... A wizard. Like, he looks like a random bureaucrat that's just, like, been stuck at city government for too long. But his hair has grown out and he hasn't gotten a haircut. And the color of blue that they use to, like, make him look invisible just looks like ballpoint pen. And it just looks like somebody kind of drew <laughs> on this, like, on the negative and was like, yeah, this will work. And they went from there. That could be what happened. But Jake is like... Jake's like, that's it. I quit. I can't do it anymore. And we're like, all right, that's a little over dramatic from not wanting to play basketball, but you do you, boy. Uh, and the Elemist is like, because of what you've done for your race, I will grant your wish because I am apparently a genie. <laughs> so then everything fades to the negative, like the whole frame blows out. And then it cuts back to the house. Jake's just in the kitchen getting some food. And it's like, okay, did anything actually happen? Or like... This show is so bad that they had a character out of focus in the camera during a really emotional moment for that character. And it was hilarious. Like, this could just be the film caught fire for a little bit and they didn't check it. They didn't know. 
And you could tell things are different now because Jake is just wearing a different shirt. Oh, his haircut is a lot shorter, too. <laughs> He's got, like, a fresh military buzz. Ah, just yes. raiding the kitchen like a goddamn homeless person <laughs> in an unlocked door. <laughs> like, he's, he's like running through the kitchen. He's like, I need this fucking cereal right goddamn now. It's like, <laughs> like he'd never eaten before in his life. And his parents walk in completely oblivious to their younger son sitting in the They're just the talking about room. like important parent stuff in front of their other kid. They're just Which like, is weird. They're just like, what's up? How okay? How old is Tom supposed to be? Right, like he has so know? much leniency. I think he's supposed to be like seventeen. He's a senior in high school. They are like seventeen, eighteen. They're coddling the fuck out of this kid. They're just like, I don't know what's wrong with him. You know what's wrong with him? He's seven fucking teen, and he's got a slug living in his head. <laughs> like, shit sucks. Okay, I get it. Jake's dad just wants to ground Tom for all of time. Yeah, he's just like, how about we just don't let him do anything? Which Fucking parent of the year award cool. right there. Jake is like, don't worry, I'll talk to him. Tom comes in and it's like, oh, talk to who? And they make plans to hang out at the sharing sometime later. And you're like, oh, that's weird. Normal Jake wouldn't have done that. But we must have gone back in time, hey? Totally. Uh, we flash forward to the school. Uh, <laughs> we get to see Tobias just creeping Being so hard. Such a creep in the background, staring at everybody. Well, then Rachel is a creep because when Jake tells her, oh, yeah, the weird guy is uh, following you. She's like jealous. Yeah. Like, what? stop flirting with your cousin. This is. Ugh. Ugh. And the slow pans we get of Tobias's face. <laughs> While well, he's watching everybody. Yeah, Tobias, I think if it hadn't been for him turning into a hawk, he would have just stalked and eventually choked Rachel in her sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I have all these feelings. I don't know what to do with them. I mean, that, that kind of tracks because as a hawk, he's able to, like, vent some of his feelings of frustration in the Killing actual small animals. death of small animals. But he has to eat <laughs> them to survive. Oh, man, I'm so jealous now that we say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Brayden, you have a cat. That's terrifying. Don't kill the cat. Don't kill the cat. Please don't kill I'm the cat. kill my cat. My cat is better than any human. Other people's cats. No, don't kill our cat. I won't. I can't handle it. It's true. So then... This took a turn. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Speaking uh, about killing cats, Tobias is about to slay some pussy because he's flirting with Rachel. And by flirting, I mean telling her about brain-stealing aliens. That's it. Like... He goes from zero to a hundred. He's like, he's like, oh man, isn't science class sucks? There are slugs taking over everybody. No one else believes me. Rachel, please, God help me. <laughs> like, like, look at that girl in the background. Normally she'd be super rude and sarcastic, but now she's totally quiet. And Rachel's like, yo, maybe she got grounded. And which, that's why she's different. I, I love that that's like, that's what he uses to describe. He's like, that chick, total cunt two days ago. Now... <laughs> Polite as can be. Now she's fine. What the fuck? Something is obviously wrong. Something's up. She got slug in her head. That girl? First school, first female school shooter ever. (laughs) Now what happened? (laughs) She's turned her life around. She used to be selling drugs to preschoolers out on the lot. And then sucking their dicks to get those drugs back? Oh, no. Oh, fuck. So, um, then cut to Rachel. Cut to Rachel, Cassie. Rachel and Cassie are walking. Ca- Rachel is like, this fucking kid is out of his mind, but I would still suck every inch of that dick. He's so cute. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. Blah, 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 are you going to blah. this party tonight? That's what's mentioned also. And then we cut to the saddest club in existence, Spider oh, it's, Club. It's the worst. Which is like, where was this Spider Club in the true reality? Did like Jake just not want to be an Animorph and then the Yerks finally have the courage to create Spider Club? I, I, Which is the only club without music? I, I think at the beginning they said something along the lines of like, this is a separate room in the sharing. Really? I think that's what they said. God, that's but weird. But at the same time, why would you name it the Spider Club and go from there? Because it's, ugh. Yeah. And like, then he gets on the mic as you're there. He's like, he's like, welcome to the Spider Club. We got some great tunes. We got the place till midnight. So let's party. Put that in perspective. I stayed up till two in the morning last night watching a Knight's Tale stoned out of my fucking skull. <laughs> a party at this goofy club till midnight does not sound all that entertaining. Especially with all these fucking, like, sharing dorks. Like, the next thing we see is Marco 
<laughs> who has joined the sharing. And, and so he's dressed got- up like a nerd <laughs> in a shitty, like, I had just watched, I just started watching Scream Queens on Netflix, and it's so fucking terrible. But that's like, that's how they dress the, like, joke, weird prep characters who are like, Oh, well, my daddy's rich. I always wear this hat. I wear sweaters like this over my shoulders. <laughs> right? And it's a joke. It's, it's supposed to be dumb that they dress fuck, like that. He's and, fucking tied And might I add, front. his fucking, the sweater that he has tied over his shoulders is so starchy that it kind of looks like when you're wearing a hoodie and, like, the hood just sticks up majority of the way. I think it's just because it kind of looked like a... It's so much of the back of his fucking it, head. It looked like a bulky hoodie. Like, it looked like just this... Like, he tied this episode one windbreaker around his neck but dyed it black first. Oh, that windbreaker. It takes windbreaker. up so much space. Oh, that windbreaker will never leave my mind. Uh, so... Rachel show Rachel's walking around. She sees Marco. Marco is a looking like a creep. B sounding like a creep. He's like, I just I got my, my act life together. Around. You should too. I'm Tobias. Hey, you want to suck me, bitch? <laughs> just and well, then so then Rachel's like, that's weird. Goes to see Jake and tell Jake, Yo, Marco's acting weird. And Jake is just eviscerates his best friend by saying, when he's not acting weird. That's when you get concerned. Like, way to be rude, homeboy. Eh, he is kind of weird. <laughs> That's true. They're He's all a weird, weird, dude. They're twelve. Who wasn't weird at twelve? Fair enough. The, then, so uh, Tobias shows up, and Jake is like, "Oh, look who's here!" Because for some reason, this Jake that we spoiler alert don't know as a controller yet is just a cunt. He's, like, acting so different that when it's revealed two minutes later that, uh uh-oh, he is a controller, it's not at all a surprise. Yeah, you're like, oh, wow, yeah, he's got that dick in his ear. Because, like, Jake goes up, he flirts with Cassie a bit, and then goes and talks to Tobias while they're in the back where they're not supposed to be. Tom shows up with his friends who bully Tobias out of the room, and that's when Jake is like, oh, my God, he's onto our plan. He knows too much. We must eliminate him. Jake's a controller, y'all. Dun, dun, dun! Oh my god. Just like that other episode. Also, a lot of Kate. So then Tom walks in, and he's wearing a shirt with little blue squares on it. And then both of his friends show up wearing almost identical shirts. And if you recall earlier, where Marco's looking like a straight creep, he was wearing a blue square shirt with they, a sweater tie on top out of after it. Sharing. It's like after your first year, here's your blue shirt. Yeah, they have they hand them out at the sharing. They're like, "All right, here is your ear slug. Here is your polo, and have a great day." <laughs> All hail to the York Empire. They we cut back to school, and uh, Tobias goes up to Rachel. He's like, "Yo, you saw how fucked up that was, right?" She was like, "Yeah, isn't that weird?" And then Cassie walks up, and Tobias and- just fucking eyeballs her like so hardcore. And Cassie just acts so weird. Like, she just says some weird shit and then walks away. She's like, she's my best friend. And that was about the gist of their conversation. I think so. And then then Rachel's like, okay, what's up with that? Tobias is like, they can be anyone. And then Jake comes and is just like, yo, what's up? Sorry, my brother was a dick last night. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? I'm sorry. (laughs) And then, like, Jake goes and bullies Chapman, which I feel like we haven't seen Chapman in so long. Okay, but I fucking dug this. It was so good. It was really good. Like, I love watching this tiny dude just, Just like. Just this tiny, chinless nobody being bullied by this tiny teenage, like, ice man. Who's wearing a shirt that's. Five sizes too big for it's him. It's so good. And he's just like, he's leaning over his desk. And at one point, like, Chapman tries to stand up. He's like, sit down. I'm it's like, like oh, oh. <laughs> hot damn. Okay. Man, bring out the big acting guns for this Whew. scene. Good stuff right there. Essentially, he's like, like, you're supposed to be tagging children if they're weird. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I don't know how he's supposed to do this. They basically gave him this impossible task for, like, right. to <laughs> identify any kids who might figure us out. And then they're surprised the that they, like, to do that? he fails. Like, come on, y'all. Well, and then Tobias is suddenly standing outside the door, and we hear the morphing sound, and he's a lizard now. Wait, Tobias still has morphing powers? Yeah, he would have gone through the um, construction site on his own. 
If uh, yeah. he was he was already in the construction in the first site when episode, they showed up, he was already in the construction site. In the book, they all travel together, so that would make sense that Jake's like, oh, if Jake decides to go back in time, everything is changed. But no, it literally means nothing. But really, in, in because... the book, Tobias also wasn't this sexy. This is true. Tobias was weirder in the book. In in the book and the show, like kind of at the beginning, they had like known each other a bit. I think if Jake said. Nah, I'm going to go around. The construction site is creepy. The others would have followed him, but then Tobias would have been like, I'm a loner. My house is closer this way. That's I'm fair. I'm going to jerk off in this construction <laughs> site on a dead dog I found. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tobias. I'm edgy. Oh, <laughs> no. Just in case you missed it. I'm going to jerk off on a dead dog in that construction site. Fuck. <laughs> it reeks of rot in my cum. I've been doing it for oh three my God. nights now. Oh, oh my God, we're still going. Oh, oh God. Also, there's a weird white orb in there, but I don't care. I get to jerk <laughs> off on a dog. <laughs> it's gigantic. I think it could make me time travel, but I'm Tobias, the dog comer. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck, I love dogs. <laughs> Come here, Homer. I want to see you for a second. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Fuck. Okay. We the got fuck a... happens next? Um, then Tobias calls Rachel from a payphone. <laughs> I'm at a payphone trying, trying to call to you on a dog. about the Yerks. Um, Rachel speaks in code like, oh, hi, Cassie, because Jake is right there. They make a plan to sneak into... Club Spider at the back and see what's up. Rachel goes, is like screaming Tobias's name. Um, Jake is suddenly there, being like, Oh, Rachel, what are you doing here? And Rachel's like, Oh, nothing. No, she's like, I left something here last night. Be like, Yeah, then why the fuck are you calling for Tobias 40 right? times? So loud. What the hell are you doing here? Suddenly there's a tiger, or no, lion. a lion. Jake fucking falls over and flails, and then now no, he's unconscious. No, Jake throws himself into the counter <laughs> and knocks himself out cold. He doesn't even touch the counter, though. He, like, pushes off of it, and then now he's unconscious. So then Tobias demorphs right in front of Rachel and ties up Jake and, like, tells her the truth. Jake wakes up and it's like, no, there's controllers everywhere. Tobias is like, no, I'm gonna fight you. And Rachel is like, no. I'm a controller. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would if you weren't. Hit. It's this human. It's not an Andalite. He's like, no. 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 And no. then, like, Chapman and Marco and Cassie and Visser 3 show Literally up. Literally every other char- named character in this show. <laughs> and then Visser 3 is, is like. Cassie and Marco. No, Cassie, no, Cassie and Marco, and Marco are, there. are there. Are they? Yeah, oh, sure. they get frog marched in by. Like I said, it was a pretty low quality rip that I found. Yeah. But then, like, Visser 3 comes in and is just like, congratulations, Jake. You are now Visser 10. And it's like, okay, like, hashtag that happened. This feels like some Yerk wish fulfillment fantasy. Also, it feel, it like, is it just me or does Visser 10 kind of lose its appeal after, like, Visser 1 and Visser yeah. 2 and 3? Right? Like, there's so many other bigger, better you guys. Are, it's funny. You are Visser 29. Why would you... Make a guy Visser 10 after just, like, catching one teenager. Well, because this teenager can morph, which is pretty <laughs> yeah, cool. But I guess. wouldn't you make the teenager that can morph the new Visser 10? Because now you also have a second morph-capable Yerk. They are talking about the Yerk that's inside Jake. They might, they'll probably give him Tobias's body. Maybe, maybe he'll, they'll put him in Tobias's body. But that's not really clear, because then suddenly we're back. In Jake's house, and Jake is screaming, and all his friends come over, and he's like, Oh my god, we fight the Yerks! Tobias, you're stuck as a hawk forever! Marco, it's great to keep fighting the Yerks! And his friends physically restrain him and shove him on the bed to be like, What the fuck, you crazy Shut asshole? Shut your stupid mouth, you idiot! There's a and Yerk then they down beat the him hall. with pillows as credits roll. And then, like, Rachel's disembodied laughter plays, and it's really creepy, and Jake talks about how great it is to have friends like this. <laughs> also, might I add that he's totally hitting on uh, on Tobias in hawk form. Oh it's my like, god! You're still a hawk. You look good as a hawk. You look good as a hawk. Oh, Axe comes in first. <sighs> Cassie's there, and it's just like, yeah, I just came to give you a book back, and then Axe runs in. Jake, I have to show you. I can blow a bubble with bubble gum, and that's kind of like a sweet moment. 
that also goes on for like a, a minute. A really long time. And he, at one point he just stands there with the bubble. Hey, yuck. Hey. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we've seen that before. Good good job, Axe. Can we continue with the show now? <laughs> um, I have to say it. Why is Tobias's leather jacket not nearly as cool as the one Axe was wearing in last week's episode? I mean, it's just in it's just in how you wear it. Like Axe, he's got that stri- he had that stride that just said, "I'm fucking cool." That's true. The high knee yes, stepping and the that loose stride. hands. Stride. Tobias, he does not want it. it I essentially Tobias. You put Axe beside Tobias. It's a Virgin Chad meme. <laughs> With only half as much un, un, uncomfortable, uh, terroristic undertones. <laughs> only a little bit less, though. Because, let's face it, to, to the Andalites, they are just straight up four terrorists. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, wait. No, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six terrorists. The, the, however number of Animorphs there are amount of terrorists. But, yet, I... <laughs> This I, I said it as like the episode ended. I'm like, this is just a really boring episode. Like I wasn't really the the big reveal that Jake is suddenly a controller didn't really do anything for me. Well, yeah, like he it, was so obvious about it beforehand. And it would be different if we didn't already have an episode where Jake was a controller, right? Like it would have a lot more impact if like maybe some other stuff happened. Like oh, like at least show the thought process. Like, oh, I wish I'd never walked into the construction site. Okay, so then what did you do that night? Your dog was with you in an arcade and then ran away. Did you not bring your dog to the arcade or did you not chase after your dog or what happened? Like, I don't yeah. know. Homer's Just make dead. Me care. Homer's I don't think dead. we see him this entire time. That's the difference that like, that's the thing the elements went back in time and, like, changed. <laughs> he just didn't have a dog at all. He was just like, sure thing, Jake. For your service, I will do this for you. He per- goes back in time, gets a Glock, and shoots Jake's dog. <laughs> I, I want, that should have been the beginning of the, like, the York time then. Just like, instead of his parents walking in, she'd be like, I don't know what to do about Tom. She'd be like, can you believe some fucking dude shot our dog in the face? Some weird blue dude shot our dog? Oh my god. Also, okay, Tobias must is- must be why Tom is acting so weird. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, at least he didn't take the, the form of the, the kindly wise black man from the, the arcade. Right, from Tobias. Just, like, last week's episode. Yeah, he's what you gotta do, son. <laughs> you wanna wish for some time travel, you got to shoot a dog. <laughs> <laughs> dog is the only <laughs> way the magic works. Fuck. <laughs> you have to set... That's what elements are powered by. Killing dogs. Oh, dog death. Kills the power You see, the I killed the dog in that construction site. Aw, oh, man, poor Homer. Do Jake's parents just keep buying golden retrievers and hope he doesn't notice <laughs> <laughs> that each dog is different. <coughs> oh, shit. Also, okay, Tobias is way worse at being secretive than the kids are as a group, and that's really saying something. Like, I did not know they could get that much worse at being secretive. But Tobias well, fucking just tells Rachel all about Yerks in chem class. He yells it in the middle of class. He's like, hey, Yerks are bad. You won't believe me if I told you. There are slugs in everyone's head. <laughs> slugs. They're called Yerks. Also, I thought Tom's Yerk hated basketball. Like, at the very first episode, it's like, oh, yeah, do you want to play some basketball? Shoot some hoops? No, nah, it's okay. I gave up that scholarship. So why are they, maybe because they're both yerked, now he wants to play basketball? That's that sick. That was foreshadowing. That's sick. The desire to play basketball is only a yerk thing. Michael Jordan, first yerked. Oh, <gasps> I believe it. Oh, oh, also, do- which yerk was it that gave him the crippling gambling addiction? Oh, no! What happened was that the cards were made with maple and ginger oatmeal. So, like, <laughs> he was addicted to the oatmeal, but only as cards. I, I don't forgot know that that was a but... thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was an episode in this TV show. Yep. yep. Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Tina, what is there? Is there anything that you'd like to say about this show? And this is where we leave a little pause so that Mikhail can, like, 
I'm just like a one minute stream of consciousness, like talk about all the stuff. It just could be him makes. singing that fucking song from the last <laughs> one. <again. laughs> Fly a bird of prey, <laughs> sweet bird of prey. You know um, my problem with this episode? It didn't have birds of prey. Bird of <laughs> every prey. episode needs birds of prey now, of uh, every show. Everyone. Every show. Oh my god. Can it you is imagine? the theme song for all shows. Game of Thrones would have such higher stakes for me if while well, Daenerys is riding a bunch of dragons, just like fly away, sweet bird of prey. <laughs> um, what else do we got? <laughs> Rachel and Jake flirt. It's yeah, it's <laughs> really let's just gross. leave that there. They keep flirting in the TV show, it's so bad. I think- did they just actually fuck in real life and they couldn't keep the chemistry off? I'm wondering. Maybe that's it. They're always, I mean, like, as we know from, what, a couple of weeks ago, like, they're always, these kids are always making eyes at each other. Yeah. That's why shows with I mean, teenage teenagers it, it, never it, cast teenagers in them. Yeah, in all fairness, it's because they're, they're teenagers and all they want to do is fuck anything in sight. Oh, my God. They're just right? always horny. Just like Braden. A 25-year-old teenager. Yep. <laughs> I just want to fucking choke everything. <laughs> everything. Sometimes uh, that works out. Sometimes that's what they're into. And uh, and it's lovely. all good. And sometimes it's all bad. Sometimes it's not what they're into. And it's really awkward that you engage that in the middle of a busy city street. I mean, you gotta... <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to say, it's just a prank, bro. It's a prank. It's a prank. I just choked you with a boner as a prank, bro. <laughs> He's wrapped my belt around your neck as a prank. The fact that we're doing it in public means nothing to me. It's not my thing. Get out of here. It's your thing, maybe. I'm just gonna sit here for a minute because I'm so comfortable. I'm just gonna sit here for a minute. I'm so fucking comfortable. If anybody asks, my name is Daddy. <laughs> There's <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit in community where they're like, one of the characters has sex with the personification of Subway and they're listening to proof of that. And, like, the CEO of Subway is like, well, this is obviously wrong. Now all of you are getting expelled, and I hate this. If someone could just hand me my jacket. They're all sitting at a table. The jacket is a little wa- little ways away, a couple feet. The characters point this out. Oh, your jacket's just over there. CEO says, yep, if somebody hands me my jacket, then I'll be on my way. Your jacket's really close. You can just get it fine. I guess I'm going to sit here for a bit, think about the crimes that you guys committed, And the joke is that he needs something to cover his huge boner that he got listening to the personification of Subway get railed. Good God. And it, uh, yeah, it definitely took me a while to get that joke. I was like, why is this guy being such an asshole about his coat? I will be right back. I'm going to go get Subway. I have definitely tried. I've, I've gotten a boner at work, tried to hide it, like, and just like not, by not paying attention to it. And then like, one of my coworkers like looked down at their set of keys, paused, and then kept going. And I looked down, and I was not hiding that boner at all. Oh my god! Is this yep. a real story? Yeah, dude, dude, flex your thighs, man. That's what I was gonna say. I've heard if you flex your thighs, it makes the boner go down. I, I wasn't. I kind of wanted to hold on to it. Oh, <laughs> you're like, was it near the end of work? I'm gonna use this one yeah. soon. I'm gonna get home in a minute. I'm I'm kind of I'm trying to like, you you know get it. I guys I am a chronic masturbator. Um, so I'm Who, trying to you? I'm trying to I'm trying to get to a place where I get real horny a lot, and then don't do anything about it. And maybe like maybe I can get better. So but next like- week we'll be talking about the Animorphs TV series again, episode eighteen, <laughs> the release. Oh. <laughs> Brayden, why don't you hit me with some predictions? Predictions. This is the episode where everybody definitely has sex. Yeah, this is the one where this is the one where I won't be able to help myself, and I will shoot all over that low graphics image on my U- on YouTube. It's yeah, like there's gonna be something. Why on earth would you call a teenage show for teens the release? I know this is typically marketed for under teens, but still, come on. They got dirty minds. What if, what if the release is the greatest release? The of sweet death? release of death. Oh my god, one of the Animorphs All is going to die. All the Animorphs die. What in the books could be release-like? 
Oh, like which book have they turned into? Okay. okay. Oh, is the, is the release not okay. a book? Okay, no, that's oh. not a. Oh my god, maybe no, that's not a book title. Yeah, maybe they do. What books have they done so far? They've done the first couple. They did book seventeen with the under with the oatmeal thing. Yeah, they're just gonna release a bunch of prisoners somehow. I don't even remember if that happens in the books. Oh, maybe it's the animal facility. The animal oh. test facility, and they release a bunch of animals this time. Yeah, like book 28. Oh, or the toilet book with the, the horses. The toilet book with the horses. Okay, yeah, they're releasing information about the toilets. Yeah. Um, I hope Chapman shows up again because we I'm, have I'm not sorry, seen him. I'm sorry, question. Yeah. To- toilet book with the horses? Oh, yeah, book 14. It's great. Brain, take it away. Um, Book 14. There is a mysterious unknown object. It is Book 14 is called The Unknown. And it's because there is an alien artifact in, like, Area 52, or, like, this area, this universe's Area 51. Which is called Zone 91. (laughs) Zone 91. By the end of the book, they have gotten in, they have seen what it is, and none of them know exactly what it is. But, um, and the Yerks don't know either. They just got to see it. But then when they escape, Axe explains to them, oh, yes, that is essentially an alien, like, a uh, septic tank that they would have released into space. <laughs> it must have missed your son. So the unknown in the book The Unknown turns out to be a toilet. So we call it The Toilet. Oh my god, I it's, love it. Yeah. Also, Yerks are controlling horses to sneak into the Zone yeah. 91. Yeah, it's... Yeah. And there's a and whole put, bit where they morph... The kids morph racehorses at a racetrack, and Cassie accidentally gets into the Kentucky Derby and runs the race and wins the race. Yeah, and they have to pretend to be hor- real horses for a bit when, like, Visitor 3 sees them and is like, hmm, they're acting a bit unnatural. Kill them. But then Cassie's like, I know how I'll act natural, and she shits. Right in front of ah! Visitor 3. Oh, <laughs> He's right. like... All right. That's obviously a real horse, Uh, but let's kill him anyway. Where can we find you on the web? Any projects you're currently working on? What are your opinions on horse scat porn? Very, very well documented. You can listen to more of it on my podcast, Two Nerds in a Basement at (laughs) CollectiveLegacy.org or on iTunes, Spotify, wherever else you listen to your podcast. Brilliant. Brilliant. I do believe we discussed horse scat quite thoroughly on the episode that I was on, which I don't think is on iTunes right now because of some technical glitches. Very which might soon be it better will be up there. For, because I also highly praise Max Landis, who is now a known sex pest. Did yes, you did is... you discuss it thoroughly, Brayden, or Thora Bradley? I definitely talked about Max Landis' good pipe. I know, and I'd want to ignore that part, because the last time you mentioned someone's good hog was when we watched Riverdale. I do plan to release that episode, but there will be an addendum added from future Jared. <laughs> As uh, there will be with the V for Vendetta one that I recorded a very long time ago. So, Well, should that be for me instead? Because, like, I'm the one who said, I'm the one who said, I'm the one who said Max Landis has good pipe. I will speak for you if that helps. Jared okay. has now had personal experience with Mac Landis' pipe and is like, no, he's not good in bad. Bad, bad, it's bad, bad, bad pipe. pipe. It's a bad showrunner, though. Pipe is full of lead. <laughs> <laughs> for us, though, the rest of us little Animorphs nerds, you can find our stuff on collectivelegacy.org or on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Facebook. You can remember to subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to give us a five-star review to help spread our thick butter. Oh, no. (sighs) Um, And you can show your support for our show on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash D-O-R-K-B-A-J-I-R. We offer special bonuses for patrons, like access to our Discord server, Animorphs essays written by us, and... I'm supposed to say much more here, but what more do you want? You want me to bleed for you? Come here. I'll fucking cut myself and you can drink it. Yeah. God if high animals. enough tears. That is the highest tier you can get. We will fly you to Brayden's house and he'll cut himself in front of you and you can drink it. It's like oh maple dear. syrup almost. I don't know what you eat, but your blood is very thick. The second highest tier, you just get access to Brayden's uh, special Google Drive with all his nudes. <laughs> yes. That still exists. It is a full Google Drive. 
the third highest tier, we release <laughs> all of these episodes redone in ASMR voice style. We've got a lot of tiers. Check us out on Patreon. We also like to give a shout out to our patrons at the hork level or higher by giving them a stanky Animorph style title. Starting with... Hi, this is Mikhail calling in from Beyond the Grave. I'm just interjecting here to give a special shout out to a patron that I forgot for the last couple episodes. So in order to make up for it, I've decided to give her four book titles to make up for the fact that I missed her in probably four episodes. So big shout out to Anne-Marie Ellis colon The Forgiving, Anne-Marie Ellis colon The Kind, Anne-Marie Ellis colon The Understanding, Anne-Marie Ellis colon The Best. Mariah Wamby, colon, The Tube. Ace Chavez, colon, the, the, the... I'm still bad at these. You think I'd be better? Uh, the, the, the Thank the, you the to Apple. Ace Chavez, Jared's Bad Brain. Jared's Bad Brain. Uh, Max Anica, colon, The Spider Club. Michael Armenta, colon, The, the, the Shirt? Martha Urquhart, colon... Marco's sweater. Greg Della Posta, colon, everybody's blue squares. Elemist, colon, Marco's underpants. Andrew Vila, colon, Marco's dad has that same shirt, I think. Anyaka, colon, you've just busted this case wide open. Zachary Vado, colon, the hog. Shanna, colon, the pipe. And last but not least, Steam Driven, colon, the friend of the show. For the Phantomorphs, my name is Tessa, the expert. I'm Brayden, the host. I claim it! (gasps) Hot damn! I'm Jared. I'm still watching this show. I don't know why. (laughs) And this has has been been Phantomorphs. Phantomorphs. The Dork! The Dork! The the Jeer! Chronicles! Chronicles! I wonder if we should apologize to Mikhail for what we've done to his baby since, uh... Okay, well, he's taking care of his real baby, so... This is true. Sometimes you gotta put the babies in order from most liked to least liked. Hi, hello, welcome to the ad for the show. I'm Mitch, the host of Wack Talk Radio. On this show, I talk to interesting people about interesting things. Do you need to know more than that? Okay, fine. Pretty much, we'll talk about whatever my guest is interested in or passionate for. Sometimes it'll be silly, sometimes serious, sometimes a bit of both. Whatever the topic is, hopefully we'll find a way to make you that much more of an expert about it. You can find us at CollectiveLegacy.org, along with some other equally awesome shows on our network. New episodes of Whack Talk Radio are every Sunday and Thursday, wherever you find your podcasts. Let us know what you think on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Whack Talk Radio. That's W-E-N-G-H Talk Radio. Whack Talk Radio. Brought to you by Collective Legacy, a podcast network.